Here we're going to look at a pretty popular exercise dealing with planes in space. Basically what's going on is we're given the equation of two different planes, non-parallel planes, in other words planes that will cross each other, and we're being asked to find the line of intersection between these two planes here. So in, in this picture here I've got a blue plane and a yellow plane with this blue equation and this yellow equation and you can see with your eyes this pink line right here that's going to be the line of intersection between these two planes so how are we going to do this what matter of fact what what is our answer even going to look like well you remember when we discussed lines in space these guys are usually written either in symmetric form or parametric form i, I kind of prefer parametric form that's where you have the x and the y and the z value written in terms of a parameter usually like t independently of one of one another so that that's what we're going to try to do so we're going to try to find a set of three equations x and y and z in terms of a parameter t that represents this pink line right here All right now how are we going to make that happen how, how does that work exactly well we're going to treat this guy almost kind of like a system of equations because you've got two equations with three unknowns and what we're going to do is we're going to solve for one of the variables like x or z or somebody easy to solve for and both of these guys and set them equal to each other and then kind of go, go from there so that if we can get x let's say as a function of let's say like y um, z is a function of y and of course y equals y then we can take the x and the y and the z equations and change one of those y values let's say into a t in terms of a parameter and so then they're all in terms of the same same parameter so if that's unclear don't worry about it you'll see where we're going as we kind of work through an example all right so let's let's start maybe by solving both of these guys for let's say x so x would be 5 minus 2y plus z and in the second equation x would be 3 plus 4y minus z and so since this is x and this is x that means that these two guys must be the same if they're both x then these guys must be equal to each other so let's take these two right hand sides set them equal to each other and i'll kind of change colors as we go so we don't don't get confused we'll have 5 minus 2y plus z equal to 3 plus 4y minus z and let's let's try to um, maybe uh, shuffle some terms around let's maybe try to solve for z so if we add z to the left we get 2z if we add 2y to the right we'll get 6y 4y and 2y make 6y and then 3 minus 5 is negative 2 so it's looking good and therefore z would be equal to 3y minus 1 if we you know divide everything through by um, by 2 of course so let me box this in here real quick so z is a function of y obviously y equals y and now all I have to do is get x as a function of y but now think about it let's just take maybe like this equation right here x is equal to 5 minus 2y plus z but z is a function of y so here let me change colors here real quick um, this z right here I'm going to replace it with what I know z is equal to in our case 3y minus 1 so let's see I'm kind of running out of colors um, here I'll, I'll do it in orange we'll try to squeeze this in so x equals 5 minus 2y plus quote unquote z but we're not going to write it as z we're going to write it as 3y minus 1 clean that up a little bit and we'll get 5 let's see minus 2y plus 3y makes plus 1y minus 1 so x would be equal to 4 plus y there you go I'll box that guy in as well so look at these three boxes right here I'll even write it in purple up under here x equals y plus 4 so z is a function of y y is obviously a function of y and x is a function of y 
Um, so all we need to do is change these y's on the right hand side to a parameter t and we're done. Um, so let me let me squeeze that in right here. I'll do this in yellow. So we'll say x is equal to t plus 4, y is equal to t, and z is equal to 3t minus 1. And so basically it works like this. If you pick a t value like 7, let's say, then y equals 7. So y equals 7. If your t value is 7, then that's what y is. But since x and z used to be functions of y, but y is the same thing as t by our own choosing, then naturally x and z would now be functions of t, right? Because t is the same thing as y. So we've written these guys as a set of parametric equations. And this set of equations gives you this line of intersection right here. So um, these can be a little tricky, it takes a little practice, but basically all you do, just to repeat one more time, is you solve for one of the variables, and, and don't you don't always have to solve for x. Do whatever is easiest. Uh, if you wanted to, maybe you can try this at your desk, maybe solve for z to begin with, and then go that route. Uh, that's fine, but solve for one of the variables, then set those equations equal to each other, uh, the right-hand sides, and you'll reduce the number of variables down and then keep going until the x and the y and the z are all in terms of some variable. Our example is y, maybe your example it'll be z or, or what have you. And then uh, once they're all written in terms of the same variable, change that variable on the right hand side to a t and you're done. That'll be a set of three parametric equations that represents your line in space. If you'd rather it be in symmetric form, I'm not going to do this, but right here where you have your set of three parametric equations, solve all three of these guys for t. So you'd have like x minus four, etc. And so once they're all three set equal to t, then set all three of them equal to each other and remove the parameter t. Then you'll be in symmetric form instead of parametric form.